Well, hello there. What's that? Hello. <laughs> Welcome to Needles at the Ready. I am Kevin. And I'm Ray. Today is Sunday. Let's move the microphone. Right there. Okay. So today's Sunday, February 18th. So we're coming to you a day later. Day late. A little later in the afternoon. Dollar short. We are... <laughs> a few a dollars little, short. A little bit tired. A little bit. We just got back from Rhode Island about an hour ago. It's neither a road nor an island. Discuss. <laughs> Did you ever watch that? No, but I know that. Like, So good. It's coffee talk, right? Coffee talk. Rhode Island. It's neither road nor, nor an island. island. Discuss. Discuss. So, it's like butter. Welcome to our YouTube channel where we talk about knitting and crocheting. Oh, sugar plum fairy. You didn't bring up any of your yarn. Nope, it's all that in the That you worked room. really hard for. I could show... Don't show pictures. We'll I have know. to just get your yarn when we get to it. Okay. Okay. Well, so we talk about knitting and crocheting and yarn dyeing and some buying of things. And books and, and books. weather and animals and blue sky. It's just a whole lot of entertainment That's for y'all. <laughs> really? <laughs> if you like those sort of things, <laughs> stick around. So, I don't know if I said this. This is episode 105. I believe you did. Well, but if, if you I didn't, didn't, you I might s- not have. I'm, I'm feeling a little delusional. It's going to be a quite mess, honest. guys. It might be. I feel like I, I told Ray, I feel like I smoked a pack of Marble Red yesterday. Oh my God. And I don't smoke. And I laughing so. and talking and drinking. All right. So let's jump in to ad mini stuff. Okay, great. So we have our <clears throat> kit, along. kit along. So you just have to make something from a kit. That's it. That's all there really is to it. There is to it. One of you guys have suggested it, so we thought that would be really fun, seeing that we have a bunch of kits. And we had uh, amazing um, prizes already donated to us that we'll talk about um, towards the end of this episode. Yes. Yes. Um, I think that's it. Is it? I really think that's all the admin stuff. Good for us. Like, I don't you really know, th- one of the things that we don't talk about often is that we have a lot of coupon codes, um, and we change the way that we link them in our show notes. So our show notes, by the way, are like down below the video. Um, you've got to click the little arrow or more, and then more again, mm. um, and then you'll be able to see kind of everything that we talked about, patterns, yarns, um, shops, and all of those things there. If we miss something, reach out to us, but most likely you'll be able to find it down below. Um, anyway, there's also a link to all of our coupon codes there. So you can go ahead and click that link. I did look at it yesterday. It's all up to date. Um, I mean, some off the top of my head is Trilogy Yarns, Knit Swag, Lila Styles for Bags. Um, naughty Knitting Sacks. Naughty Knitting Sacks. We've got some really great ones. And we also yeah. have a uh, an affiliate link with uh, DeliQ. That's linked down below as well. Well, Jimmy Beans. Jimmy Beans Wool. Thank you. And um, Try Treats, which we need to figure that out. I know. You and I just have to... We'll have to discuss. I know. So... Discuss. <laughs> Full circle. Exactly. All right. All right, so, Bob. That's pretty much the ad mini stuff. Now we'll jump into how our two weeks have been. And I was thinking about that. I... Saw all but one of the nieces and nephews over the last two weeks. You did. So after... You were the baby whisperer. I, well, yes and no. So after the last episode, the following Sunday, we went to my brother's house and my our sister-in-law's house and saw our niece and nephew, Patrick and Emma, to do our Christmas with them since we missed that as well. We typically have breakfast with them Christmas morning yes. and do a gift exchange with the kids. So we weren't able to do that this past year. So we just did that two weeks ago. Yeah. I and forgot then, about that. It was nice to see everybody. Yeah. That it was, was cute. We all hung out. Like we just all hung out. And yeah. Like we just hung out on the couch and, and chit chatted. Yeah. And the then, kids love their knitted gifts, which is always really nice. Like the minute that they get them and they put them on, it like warms. My yeah. Heart, you know what I mean? And then our sister-in-law had told us that. So last year in 2022. 23. No, 2022 for Emma. We gave Emma oh, right. a love note. Yeah. And she had worn it recently, but she's grown. She's turned eight years old. And there's yes. a little growth spurt that happens for sure. With so kids. it's a little bit small on her now. So now I'm going to um, tackle some stash and see about either doing another love note or I was thinking of doing a Lulu slipover for... 
and that's a pattern from Petite Knit. It's a DK weight are you pattern. Yarn? I am still in the process of oh, putting yeah. the yarn back. I have also, if you guys have been following along, I've been adding my yarn in these cubes behind me because I pretty much have these 10 cubes for the most part are mine. So I've done this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and now this one. So I've done Great. five. So, so a lot of times we get comments like, what's that orange yarn above your head, Kevin? Now you can go to Kevin's Ravelry page and you could. check it out. Yeah, and it says like, so the way that I've been doing it is this is row one, cube one, cube two, row two, cube one, cube two. And I've been putting... That's really smart. Yeah, I've been putting that in my, in like the notes for my stash so yeah. that I know. So I have to go in there and find some stuff for Emma. Um, so yeah, and then we also did, I ran over to your brother's house and our other sister-in-law's house um, briefly a couple days ago. Yep. Got to see Dominic, Roman, and Eloise. And then the day after that, I ran over to your other brother's house and our sister-in-law, <laughs> and I got to hang out and watch um, Riley for a bit. And I got a really cute picture of the two of us. It's actually a really cute picture. Oh my it. God, are you going to show that picture? No. Can you send me that picture? She's adorable. Riley and I. Yeah. So that was She's nice. She's the happiest baby. <clears throat> so happy. Yeah. So we got to spend an hour together and watch some lady on the TV. I don't know what her name is, but um, it's a children's show, and the one was a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think you might have to be uh, yeah. in order to be a host of a children's uh, show. So yeah, so, and then... Does the anybody th remember the Magic Garden? No. Bum, 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 bum. I don't remember oh, Magic Garden. My mom will tell me. I was obsessed with that show. I just They were these two women that would come and like sing and stuff. Hmm. Open up the window. Something. You know, I don't always No, that's believe... a real thing. That's <laughs> okay. a real thing. Please okay. comment down below if you if you remember the Magic Garden, the Secret Garden, Magic Garden. Magic Secret Garden magic... is a different movie. Right. I think it's the Magic Garden. <clears throat> and then... that was my jam growing up. I guess Sorry, the... I cut you off. No, you're fine. Um, and then the big thing, um, and Justine, if you're watching, yeah, just mute, and then yeah, we had a horrible. I'll time. give you a thumbs up. I know it was awful. It was I'll awful. give you a thumb, <laughs> thumbs up when it's okay to listen. <laughs> so we, <laughs> which is why we're a day late. Yes, we honestly we planned. We had great plans, right? We did to get the podcast like recorded, recorded and uploaded so that there would be no interruption to your weekend plans. However, it didn't work. No. So, this past weekend... Um, yesterday. We, <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> we we uh, went to Rhode Island yes. to Skein Yarn Shop. Our friends Hope from Hope Made, Hope Made Yarn Co. And Keisha of Simply Vintage Designs. They were having a trunk show at Skein Yarn Shop. And we decided to make the drive. It's not too bad. It's about like an hour 45 for us yeah at the that's the longest it's ever taken us to get there yeah um, it took us like an hour and a half i think this time around in yeah. this yeah we drove but we drove in a, you know some snow and yeah. stuff but it was you know the drive's fine yeah. there wasn't any traffic so mm -hmm. it wasn't a bad drive uh we got there yesterday around noon yeah maybe a little before yeah something like I that i think so and we hung out what at a the great store. they had I a mean, great turnout we talk about skiing all the time Honestly, if you're in that area, or even if you're not, it's worth the drive in um, to see this yarn shop and to meet the wonderful community that they've built over there. Um, Hope and Keisha had the best setup, I feel like, that I've ever seen at a trunk show before. Skane is large anyway, so there's a lot of, they have a lot of room. Yeah. Um, but Hope had two, like, big displays. Um, Keisha had all of her jewelry, uh, which we'll show in a second it, or a little bit later. It, yeah. Ama both of them are absolutely amazing. But it was a great turnout. Uh, there were a lot of people there. We got to, like, socialize and chat with a bunch of you. Yeah, we um, got – it's fun. Again, we sat and knit a little bit. We did. We knit, and we got to chat with people that we've met at the store previously, say hi to, um, you know, people that we recognize. Mm -hmm. And it's just always nice getting to spend time with like-minded people. Yeah, for sure. So that was yeah. It fun. felt like an event. Yeah, so we spent – the day there and then we went back we headed back to our hotel 
for a couple of hours and then we went out to dinner. It was awful. <laughs> Honestly. No, it was Sorry, Justine. I know, Justine, please don't really listen. really love you so much, and we missed you so much. <clears throat> I know. Just, just but, don't listen. Go go knit on your blanket. I cannot lie. I cannot tell a lie. Yeah, we went to um, Old Greenwich Oyster Old Bar. Old Greenwich Oyster Bar, um, and which has been like our tradition every time we've gone up there. Well, it's Lori's tradition, and she's just passed it on she, to us. Yeah, well, Lori's also the mayor of that friggin' town, which she is, is crazy. She knows everybody. Um, we got a, we went in at like seven o'clock. It was and super we were, busy. We weren't there until 11. We did stay quite a while. <laughs> we closed down the bar. They were sitting, the, the staff were sitting at the bar waiting and I'm, I definitely have a history of, I worked in the service industry, so I totally get it. But we did, uh, pick up on the queues and we did pack up um, we did. and leave around that time. We weren't there by ourselves for very long. No, no, actually we were. No. no. Um, honestly, it's. And I know it's like an oyster bar, right? So that's what they're like known for. And they have a ton of like seafood dishes and everything is fresh and, and like high end, beautiful food. But honestly, it's like the best pasta I've ever had. I got the blackened chicken um, a la vodka yeah. Yeah, over penne. Oh my goodness. It was so good. You got a filet mignon. <laughs> Yeah, I got filet. I don't know who we thought we were. Asparagus and yeah. some roasted potatoes. It was delicious. We had fantastic drinks and we laughed and chatted. Ugh. And so it was us, Lori, Hope, and Keisha. And we just had a fantastic time. Yeah, it was really great. I had one of the best drinks I've ever had in my life. Um, it was like it was like an after dinner drink. So it was like cognac and cinnamon and cream and um, Patron. Cafe Patron. Oh, it was so good. Yeah, it was just a really yeah, nice time. Yeah, it was a great time. night. Great um, night. Got back to the hotel a bit so late. So many laughs. So many la Like, hysterical. I couldn't laughing. even pull out of the... No. Uh, I was still laughing on the way to the car. Yeah, he was laughing in the car. I was like, I can't with you. Like, literally couldn't. It was hysterical. <laughs> I don't know um, how I drove home. And then we went out to uh, breakfast this morning with them to Dante's Kitchen, which was fantastic oh. food. And it's only, like, uh, maybe, like, two stores away from... Like it's on the same road. It's like yeah, it's really on the same quick. road as the Oyster Bar, and then one of the best breakfasts I ever had too. Yeah, the breakfast the was food delicious. There has been, every time we go, the food is delicious. Yeah, it's all and about food. Then we headed home, and now we're here. Here we're we are, and we will continue to speak with you all. Okay, great. So, so that those were our um, two weeks. Great, pretty much, right? Yeah, I'm st you know doing schoolwork. I'm on week five, I think, of this class of a set. Oh, there's seven good. week. Yeah, there's seven week courses, so they go really, really fast. Yeah. Um, so I have, after this class, I think I have either four or five more classes to go to complete my MBA, which cool. sounds like it's so far away, but it'll go by quick. No, it'll go by fast. Yeah. Um, and, and then I've just been dying. I died a lot of- You did. Um, one of a kinds. So on the site, on our website, which is needlesattheready.com, they're listed as single brews. And I was just using like leftover dye stocks and washing out the, so the dye powder comes in a plastic container- in powder form, it's toxic, so you don't want yeah. to like throw that out. So washing those out and making sure I got all of it, I used that with some you know containers that were empty. So there's a lot of one of a kinds in the shop right now. <laughs> Great. Okay. So let's talk about what we're wearing. Let's talk about. Oh yeah. I am wearing two knitted items. Well, three, but I'm not going to throw my feet up here. I don't have the energy for that today. No. So I'm wearing a Lyle cap. This is a free... Mm, is it free? I think it's a free pattern by Blue Sky Fiber. Yeah. It's DK weight. One needle size. I love it. It's my favorite lightweight DK. Yeah, it's really such a fun pattern too. The pattern so is technically written for five rows of a twisted rib. I normally increase it to about 10 and then just some plain old stocking at. This is probably, I actually don't know what yarn this is. It's either Lane and Lotus. It's Lane and Lotus. I think it's Lane and Lotus. Yeah. But it's a nice neutral, some green speckles, mm -hmm. probably some brown mm -hmm. in there. And then I am wearing the Lava Lake. Just take this off real quick. This is a beast by Stephen West. Yeah. And oh. this is a kit that I purchased from Steven and Penelope. It is Ching Fiber. This is their BFL base. This color here is one of my favorite colors ever. And it's just a really beautiful 
fade. triangle shawl. It's a fade. You start from one corner. Oops, like sorry. you start from this corner over here that Ray has. Yeah. And you just work your way. You have some eyelets, which gives it a little bit of interest. And I love it. Yeah. I do I wish... I do wish... <clears throat> um, that fifth skein. This fifth skein was a solid to give it a little bit more of... A little more contrast in it, but I still love the palette. Yeah, me too. And I don't think... You know, looking at it more and more, obviously, like... You'll see, if you look at the pattern and what other people have done, you'll see, like, that strip in down the middle that Kevin was talking yeah. about is, is quite, like... Pronounced. Pronounced. Yeah. But I like it like this, too. But, yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a big cold shot. day here. It is very cold here. So, I got the knits on. Nice. Um, I'm wearing two knits as well. Um, this one is um i think i've worn this recently on the podcast too but this is one of my favorites this is a vertices unite by stephen west one of our absolute favorite um shawl patterns it's such a fun modular knit um this is knit with uh les garçon one of their actually a combination of a couple of different of their mystery clubs that we got so i tried to put a lot of their colors go so well together anyway they're such geniuses with color but I wanted to have um, like a darker um, tone because my other my other one is like kind of bright. It's got like some blues and yeah, all that. So um, I don't know all the colorways because, like I said, it was a mystery club. But um, but yeah, it, you start with this section here, which is the biggest, the largest section. Um, this is section one. So you're knitting with two colors, striping it. Um, and then as you knit, you know, you just, it's, it's modular and you just connect it, you know, connect it, um, as you go, which is really great. And I just, I use this opportunity just to kind of like play with colors, see what I thought went really well together. I do love that one of these colorways has the Stellina in it, sparkle. You probably, I don't know if you can see it. It's very, um, subtle. Thank you. That's the word I was looking for, but this section has some sparkle in it. I think they're also very easy to wear. It is a, it's you know? a really, yeah, it's, yeah. I would say it's my favorite shawl pattern to, one of my favorite shawl patterns to knit. Oh, for I've sure, done, same. I mean, I've done two. I would love to do a third one and I probably will. Maybe I'll do it out of like some of my colors. I was going to say, day. I would love to do, maybe I'll do one out of your colors because I want to knit with your, with your yarn too. But I think that would make it cool, um, a cool sample anyway. So that is it. what we're wearing. Yeah, I wore this yesterday. All right, and I have one FO, and I have one, two, three whips. Wow. I have zero FOs today. Oh, I left my notebook downstairs. And I have three whips. Okay. I don't have my notebook. With okay, me. do you want me to get your notebook, and is there yarn I can grab, too, while you're starting to talk about this one? Yeah, please. Is the yarn downstairs as well? No. All the yarns in the room in the... Bit bags. In the spout room? In the spout room. And the and bags that the, are on the bag. Okay. And then right. your... What am I getting? My um, binder with all my knitting notes in it, please. Thank you in advance. All right. So, I finish my Muscle Burra, Muscle Berg, Muscle B, whatever you want to call it. This is the pattern by Isolde Teague. So, you knit a tube. And then you fold it in on itself, and then you can wear it as a slouchy hat. Or depending on how much you knit, you also have, you can wear it brimmed. And I'll put it on in a moment. So this is a fingering weight yarn. This yarn is from Trilogy Yarns. It was from when she was doing her Discovery of Witches club this is the colorway called absence and desire it is a beautiful neutral gray and it has some green brown i would say even some dark gray speckles in it so let's see all right so i knit this on a us3 which is a 3.25 millimeter the pattern calls for a I think it's called the pinhole cast on. So I used a, I go to Tin Can Knits is the one that I found that works for me. And it is a written 
instructions. There's no video that I've seen. So you cast on, do a pinhole cast on of eight stitches, and you can do it on either like DPNs or magic loop. So I do mine on magic loop, follow the increases. And once you get an inch of knitting done, you measure your gauge and in the pattern, it then kind of gives you all the numbers that you're going to need to make the hat that's going to fit you best. Ray and I have made these before and we just didn't get a good fit. One of you lovely people made us one for Christmas. And based on the numbers that she provided, I went and used the US-3. My gauge was seven stitches per inch. And I ended up going with the adult medium size. Let's get that pulled up. I'm pretty confident it was the adult medium. I just put together a whole bunch. Okay. I don't know. That's fantastic. Thank okay, you. Great. You're very welcome. My pleasure. Absolutely All right. my pleasure. Um, <laughs> Simply the best. 32. Yeah, I did the adult medium mm -hmm. for this. And then I just kind of knit it to pattern. So it fits quite well. So this is how it, it does. would fit slouchy-like. Right? So just yeah. give me a little bit. But if I... Uh, Pull it on, do a brim, get the four layers over my ears. Yeah. It's really nice fitting. It's a good fit. Oh, I gotta see. Bless you. Bless you. Yeah, sneeze right into your shawl. <sighs> That's you. really Thank smart. You. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. I'm glad. <laughs> I have something in my eye. See? That's what happens. God punishes you. I will say, I probably... Should have knit this maybe, I would think maybe like an inch longer. Okay. Just to give me, just for the brim part. To go down over your folders. Yeah, just to give me more of a folded brim. Okay. So next time, and I will do another one. Um, I'll probably just make it a little bit longer. It took me about a week mm. to knit it. And I enjoyed the process. I was, you know, by the end, I'm kind of done because it's, a boatload of saconet but it's one of those kind of easy mindless knits and what i've seen recently and this is why i want to do another one is people have been doing a striped virgin but doing yeah. a helical one and they look really really nice and what's cool about that the idea of doing it that way right is that let's say you have let's say you're a sock knitter and you knit some socks a lot of the times you have about 50 grams kind of depending on how long you make your socks, you can have 50 grams of your socks skein left over. If you have two of those, now you can just throw them in here. You have yeah. 100 grams, and you could do a Musselboro striped. Musselboro. Musselboro. Muscle B. Muscle B. So yeah, so I thought this was, it was a good knit. I'm happy with the fit of this. Yeah, I would, and you know, again, this was kind of inspired by... Um, like we couldn't find the right gauge. See, I like this. We couldn't find the right gauge every time we. And I know you talked about this. You probably just talked about mm -hmm. it while I was downstairs. But um, to now kind of know what you're looking for. Yeah, it really did. If yeah. it ends up, it looks really well. good, Kev. You and I think it's up. a good. This yarn is gorgeous. This is trilogy, right? Yeah, I think it's um, and it's a good gift net. Yeah, you know, gets. You get to use up some she of your single skeins. Yep. Look at the pooling and stuff. In there. That's I know the fun. pooling's really interesting when, especially when you knit it in a tube like this, because yeah. you don't know really, you know, right. how it's going to um, knit up and just seeing how it changes yep. throughout the and like process. This, so this side has more of like the darker, you know, than this does. Um, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. This is more of like pooling, I think, on this side. So if you wanted to wear that out. That's the fun thing about this pattern is you just kind of tuck in what you what you want. And a lot of people do different colors. Yeah, you, know? you could split it. You can split Some it. Some people even do like in the middle to do a <clears throat> one by one or two by two rib mm. for however many inches. And then when you fold up the brim. It's ribbing. It's, yeah, it yeah. looks like ribbing. So. Super cool. This yarn is really, what's the base? Um, It's not her MCN. 
Oh, you I would think, think that a, you would have written that down. I know. I'm surprised I didn't. I think it was. I think it's an eighty twenty. Yeah. I don't know though, off the top of my head. It's really really nice. Super so, soft. and you can knit this in any weight yarn. The pattern. Yeah. You just again do your gauge after knitting for an inch. Which can be a little bit finicky because you're doing your increases. So you don't have, you really don't have a lot of space to get that right. gauge. So you have to kind of finagle it just right. But once you know your numbers, two, after doing one on fingering weight, now I just, I'll follow this. I don't have to check my gauge. I just know I'm going to use a US3 and I get seven stitches per inch. So mm-hmm. I know what size I'm going to make. Unless you have like a thinner fingering weight yarn or using something different maybe Maybe, but i probably wouldn't adjust it for fingering like i was thinking i have the leftover yarn from sander yarn co for my sweater i have a full skein but i also probably have about 50 grams over there Mm. so i was going to look at that and look at my that'd be nice for a a super wash too my yarn from my bumpy cardigan yeah since they're both the bfl masham see about me maybe making another hat out of those and use up the rest of that yarn yeah really great all right so that is my one fo nice and now i have three whips and i'm sorry you have how many i have three as well okay yeah would you like me to go yeah why don't you go thank okay. you okay why don't i show this this is a crochet this is um going to be my entry for the kit along we um Actually, two of my projects were purchases from Vogue. Look at me. Look at me go. Hmm? Good job. So when we were at Vogue, um, and I, I showed this last uh, last time, that um, we saw the folks over at Toft. Um, they were selling you know, some of their crochet kits. And I w- we weren't sure. Like, I wasn't sure if I was going to get one immediately. But then obviously seeing them in person, like, they are so good. They're so good. Yeah. So I'm doing this guy. This is Seth the Wensleydale. And um, we got their yarn. And we also bought some crochet hooks while we were there. Because I didn't have the US or the, not US, the three millimeter crochet hooks. So um, we got some crochet hooks from Prim. So I'm using a the recommended G hook or C hook. C hook, which is a three millimeter hook. I don't really know the letters, so I just, I just, it says it on here, which is why I know. <clears throat> and the yarn, I have to say, it's their Toff DK, 100% um, wool, but it is amazing yarn to work with. And we, we've been saying this, like, I would love to knit um, like a sweater out of this yarn. It's DK weight, it's super squishy, um, it's got a really nice twist to it, it's light and airy. Um, so the colors that I'm using, and I'll show you what I have so far. Um, the colors that I'm using are stone. I'm making it up. I'm making this up. Isn't one of those oatmeal? And oatmeal. Or camel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stone and oatmeal. Good job. So stone and oatmeal here. And so here's what I have so far. I have his body all done. And now I'm just working on putting in these little curly cues, which um, take a little bit of time for me, to be honest with you. And I struggle doing this with Skylar on the loose because it's not like knitting. I can kind of just like put it down and just like, you know, whatever. But the way that you do these little curly cues, which is super cute, um, is that you're chaining a bunch and then you're doing um slip stitches yeah slip stitches as well as um uh double single crochets through here when i started the pattern i was very confused and i might have said this on the last podcast i did but i'll say it again i was very confused at first because i'm like double crochets like how how is that even going to work usually like amigurumi is like single crochet but it's written in uk terms so don't get nervous if you don't understand uk terms it's they're very very simple they're their double crochet is our single crochet and then um, so on. So treble crochet um, is like their double crochet. Our double crochet. Our double crochet. So anyway, um, really great 
Uh, really great pattern, super easy to follow. There are videos on their website to help with any confusion that you might have. I use the videos um, to figure out where to sew everything on. And in one of her techniques, every time I've had to sew on legs um, or arms or anything like that to a project before, I always just kind of like whip stitched it and just like let it hang out. Their, um, her recommendation is that you're sewing the top piece and then you're, you're coming around and you're sewing the bottom as well. So it really gives a good secure um, attachment. And they follow every one of her patterns, their patterns follow um, the same kind of body shape. So you get like a little tummy, um, you have the head shape, the arms and the legs are, are shaped very similarly for your like your standard body. Um, so this is going to be able to, and then where, where you sew on the legs, it'll help, um, prop it up so that I can like sit on oh, a nice. shelf. Yeah. So I'm going to cover this guy, um, with, oh, you can see here, I started my chain for my next, for my next piece. And then you just go in and, um, and do these curly cues like all over the body. So it's a lot. It does take me a little bit of time. Um, to do them, but I think the finished project it, product is going to be like super cute. I think he's going to be adorable. I'm just going to get some black yarn, just do like a little nose in here. There are no eyes you have to worry about, so there's the the little nose. You do like a little X y. thing in my jigger Y. Yeah, thanks. So yeah, so he's really really cute. I think I did overstuff um, overstuff the body a little bit and the head. Looking, watching the videos and seeing uh, more of these, they look like they're a little bit understuffed um, to give it probably maybe more of a like droopy look. Okay. But yeah. Cute. Yeah. So that's Seth. He's going to be adorable when he's done. And these are really great because they can cover up any mistakes or seams that you may have. Oh, that yeah. Stick good out point. a little bit more, you know, for us non profesh crocheters but really really super easy it was just single crochet or uh uk term double crochet and um decreases and increases throughout look at his little tail very cute. cute yeah 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 super fun there's a really cute um somebody had sent us um a link to Let's see. To one of their patterns, they have crocheted budgies. Mm. And for those of you who don't know, or if you hear any whistling in the background, we have a budgie or a parakeet named um, Skylar. So that might be a kit that I purchase in the future. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. So that's Seth. He's cute. I like him. He'll stay. Good job. Thanks. All right. So my next one is also a purchase from Vogue Knitting Live a couple weeks ago. There was a booth there from a company called Hello Bargello. It is a pla plastic canvas kit using mm. the Bargello technique or patterns. So the kit comes with... So this is it. It's called Silver Springs. It is a wall hanging. So it comes with everything you need. It comes with a plastic canvas. It comes with a tapestry needle. It comes with a doll that you need to hang it, and it comes with two skeins of each of the six colors. And here is my progress so, so cool. far. There are three color options available. There's a pink one, a blue one, and gray, so I went with the blue. Somebody was very um, picked up on this, and I did not realize this. These colors are very similar to my Stephen West Geo Gradient they shawl. Are. Although that shawl is leans more green, mm -hmm. so it's more blue green where this is there is some green undertones to it, but they are it is really similar. So it'll be funny when they're both done. Yeah. Like far away them. looks super cool and then like up close like to see the textures and stuff in there. Yeah. Really, it's been really, really, neat. really relaxing and the back is also really fun, you know. It's like what, seeing your floats in a colorwork sweater yeah. or something or a colorwork yeah. hat. But I really have enjoyed doing this. It's been, it's really relaxing. It gives me a nice break from knitting. If I don't feel like knitting, mm -hmm. I can pick this up and do it. Um, 
And it, yeah. you said it comes with everything you need, right? The, yeah, the everything, everything that you need. There are video tutorials if you need to view those. The chart is super easy. This chart's only one chart. It gives you instructions on how to start and in which way to... So I started in this corner, and then you work one color at a time and just keep going. Yeah, it's really, really cool. So I have this link down below under works in progress, this particular specific pattern. And then also under our shops and more is the Hello Bargello, just their main site. So you can look at um, all of the other options that they have. Yeah, so I just have to clean up some of these edges and cut them. You cut them or you burn them? No, you cut them. Okay. Like I have to cut off this whole section here Oh, I see. so that it's flat. Mm. Uh, but yeah. So that is something I've been working on here and there and making some progress on. I think that's going to be so cute. Where yeah. are we going to hang it? I don't know yet. Maybe downstairs. Pasta doble. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. You're up. Me? Great. So next, um, this is almost a hoe. I'm going to say this is a halfway hoe for all of you bingo folks. Get it? No? Um, okay, so this is oh, my... Yes. Yeah. These are my vanilla socks uh, that I've been working on. Something just to have while I can like socialize and chat. It's knit out of the Earth Tones Girl and Woolens and Nosh collaboration. This is uh, so. This is love. Is the colorway? It's on her ninety percent targi. Uh, her as in Michelle from Woolens and Nosh. Ninety percent uh, targi and ten percent nylon self striping. Her and Denise uh, collaborated on these colors. They're so good. Um, I just finished the toe on our drive home. Kevin drove. I drove there. Kevin drove home. So these are the um, these are the socks. I'm gonna do an afterthought heel. I already marked in where my heel was, um, and then I did. So I have a mini. Also, I was gonna do the mini um, for the toe and the heels. But as I'm as I'm knitting this, where my um, Excuse me. where my decreases for my toe are supposed to happen, it starts at this brown, uh, this dark brown here. If um, if I was going to use the mini, I felt like it was just going to be too much light. Okay. You know, so I decided that I wanted to just I wanted to finish it up in the uh, in the self striping. So um, I've got plenty of yarn left over for the next, the second sock, and I'll do the mini. Um, I already marked it, so that'll go here, in between those colorful, those colorful stripes there. I did a um, seventy-two stitches. I did a uh, uh, German twisted cast on. I used the. Um, I pulled it all the way out to uh, the start of a new color, like a transition, and I used that. Um, to start my cast on so I get this one stripe of that contrasting or that, you know, to break up that color a little bit. Um, also what I did, it's a two by two rib. And I talked about this last time. What I did was at every color change, I just knit that row. And then I picked up the um, the ribbing uh, on that, you know, the, the second time around, regardless of where I got, like where I got to. So if I if I started this pink, say, um, you know, in the middle of the row, I would then just start knitting it. I would break that ribbing pattern and knit it. And the reason to do that is so that we wouldn't have um, those like little, per they look like like pearl bumps, like separations almost yeah. between the two colors. So I thought that was a good technique. I did that for about um, 15 to 20 rows. I can't remember. I don't have my book with me. I'm sorry. Um, so it's about, it's about, uh, an inch and three quarter length cuff. I did a seven inch leg and then um, I wear a size 12. So my foot length is 11 inches. <clears throat> so I gave myself about an inch and a half to two inches for my heel um, and um, knit, this, uh, knit this to about six and a half inches and then started my toe. That gives me um, a half an inch to an inch of negative ease on the socks, which is usually what I like. You want to have a little, you want, I, I like it a little bit tighter um, on my foot. So yeah, super cute. I, I love the, I love the striping in here. I love the color combination. Yeah. I love the different. Yeah. 
Like different browns and, and the like pinks. pinks. Brown and pink is just such yeah. a good combo. Like brown and pink and then brown and blue are really great mm-hmm. combos of colors. I agree. So this is what I still have left over. Plenty for a second sock, the same size. And like I said, I have the mini to go along with that for the heels. I'm happy with my choice. Um, I'm happy with my choice for the toe. Yeah. Yeah. To not have switched to the mini. I think it looks so good. I'm really, really happy with it. So I'm happy you're happy. I am. And, you know, I first time doing a uh, Kitchener stitch in the car. So that was exciting. That wasn't such a problem, though. What else can I say? Oh, and I um, I knit a lot of this sock in the shop yesterday. And one of our favorite bags, one of my favorite bags is is the uh, matter root bags with the yeah. clip, especially the smaller one. So I had it clipped... And I just had it on my hand and I was just like knitting while walking around and talking to everybody because it's just round and round in a um, spiral, spiral, you know? So yeah, that's that. And what did you knit them on? I did on nine inch circular needles, nine inch, hold on, nine inch circular needles. Oh yes, I said it, nine inch circular needles. If you didn't hear it the first time. That's nine inch circular needles. Okay. Okay. Good job. Thanks. <laughs> I think we got our fill of nine inch circular needles. They are my favorite uh, way to knit socks. I love them. And I we ran into a few people who also knit on nine inch circulars at the shop. So I love that. And we ran into some people who was were not successful with the nine inch circulars. But you do you, boo. Whatever gets the knitting done, as long as you're enjoying it, preach. Good job. Thanks. Aren't these the best bags? Yeah. It, I mean, so good. So many good bag makers. So many good ones. So, my next whip is a new cast on. This is living in a fat squirrel bag. It's a great bag, too. This is a hat. I am working on the Parkview hat by Tracy Miller. This is a DK weight pattern. It, it was written for fingering weight held with mohair. So that's what I'm doing. And I've never knit with mohair before. And I am using one of our clubs that we got from Dyed by Dells, now known as Les Garçons. This is the Lyra's, Lyra's Jordan and Pan's, I'm not gonna say Pan's full name because I don't know how to say it, but Pan's Fur. So this was from their His Dark Materials Club. Oh, Pant- yay. Pantalemons. Pantaloons. Pantalemons. So here Pantalemons. is the color. This is Lyra. And this is Pan. And this is me hat. So I'm still working on the ribbing. Here you go. It looks so fuzzy. <laughs> it is so fuzzy. I feel like I have mohair in my throat. Maybe that's why you feel like you smoked a pack of Marlboro. Maybe. So I... I'm knitting this on a US-4 for the ribbing. I did a German twisted cast on Mm -hmm. for that. It is a 2x2 rib. And then I'm going to switch to US-7, which is a 4.5 millimeter needle once I get to the body. And it's a slight ribbed pattern. And I wanted something... And you'll see in a minute. I've been doing... After doing the muscle burra and then my next project, excuse me, that I'll talk about. It's been a lot of stock net and I needed something to break up that monotony yeah. of a stock net. Um, it's really comforting to do that, but it is. sometimes I need something that requires a little more thought or mm-hmm. requires me to pay attention. So I cast this on and I'm also trying to grab something from Sash yeah. to work from and say, okay, how can I use this now? So I think this is a good way. And I'll do that um, if I like this pattern. I have a couple, two more skeins with either mohair and one maybe with Surrey in there that I can possibly do this or do like a muscle burrow with it. But I don't know if I show this. I think I did. So yeah, Park View, really simple ribbed hat. Mm-hmm. That one's cute, the one that she has in the photo because yeah, it looks really like cute. it's self striping yeah. with the mohair. It comes in three sizes. And I am knitting size, I said size two, 
but I think I actually changed it at the last minute and did the larger size. I feel like I went up a size just because the size two felt kind of small to me. You, think you should write that down in your book. I will. I'll just have because I have size two written down, but I think I changed my mind as I was knitting or casting on. Hmm. So I'm pretty like confident. I went to a size three, which would fit a 22 to 24 inch head. So yeah, that's that. It's Cute. really interesting because. Like how much the mohair changes the color. Well, too, when you look at, you know, and this is the fun thing about yarn. You look at the skein and you're like, oh, this is a really beautiful red. And it is. But then you get it into a cake and you're like, oh, look at all the dark bits. Mm. I wonder how that's going to knit up. And then you start knitting with it and you can see, I don't know if you all can see, but it almost looks stripey. You can see when those dark bits hit in there. And it's not pooling, but it almost creates like some faux stripes in it. Yeah, it's really cute. And then because the mohair is such a contrast of the color of the yarn, that's looking more more marled than... Like if I were to hold a red mohair with yeah. this, where it wouldn't look marled, it'll just either mute it or enhance the red. Right. So, yeah, this is a furry beast, though. Sure is. God bless y'all who love knitting with mohair, because this, not that it's not fun, but you also have to pay attention, like picking up, making sure you're grabbing the strand of mohair, too, when you're knitting. And I did notice a couple of times where I wasn't grabbing it, so I just you know went back in a couple stitches to correct that. And yeah, but there's a lot of fuzzies that fly around. I know. So that is my park view hat. Oh, those foxes are cute. Yeah, and I got my little fox and pine fox stitch markers. Do, do, stitch do, do, stoppers. Do, do. Stitch stoppers, not markers. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Very cute. And I'm really happy that I just found my um, measuring tape. I thought I left it at skein last night. Well, not like we wouldn't be back up there anyway. Okay. So that is whip number two for me. Lovely. Um, I have my last whip I will show you. It is the one that has gotten the majority of my attention. Um, I can't seem to stop knitting it. This is the Men's Classic Raglan <clears throat> by... Um, um, who, who are you by? Men's Classic Raglan Pullover by Jane Richmond. It is a simple um, raglan sweater. I um, purchased some yarn after seeing Loop's version of this sweater. And this is their version of the sweater. So you have some color blocking and like um, there with the three different versions of the colorway that they have. I got my yarn um, in, like, I'll show you in a sec. Uh, my three colors are above, below, and somebody told me how to pronounce this. Roy, Roybus? Roybus? Oh, I know. I remember seeing the comment. Yeah. It's 100% um, extra fine merino. There, it's worsted weight, 220 yards per 100 grams. I'll show you um, what I've gotten so far, <clears throat> and I'll show, I'll tell you, tell you all about this sweater. I am in love. I'm at the bind off right now, and I decided to change the bind off a little bit for what the sweater calls for. So I'll tell you about that in a sec. I'm doing the fourth size. Uh, so it's for a chest, uh, 36 inch, ch oh, I'm sorry, 46 inch chest circumference. I wanted to give myself some additional positive ease. What I like about this pattern is that the size increments are in twos, which makes it a lot easier if you fall in between, you know, two sizes. Yeah. Sometimes those patterns are really difficult to figure out what size you want to do. If there's like eight stitches in between or eight different sizes in between eight inches, whatever it is, it's like almost impossible to kind of figure out what you want. Yeah. So this will allow me to get that four, um, four to six inch positive ease that I'm looking for. 
my chest has been fluctuating a little bit um, depending on my diet. So uh, could go from like a 41 to a 42, um, sometimes a 40, sometimes a 43, who knows, whatever. Anyway, I thought a 46 was a safe bet. I tried this on. It fits beautifully. Um, I don't remember where I was last time, but I am just binding off the body of the sweater now. So here it is um, with all three colors. I think it's going to be so cool. Wait, that's the back. Here's the front. Um, I loved... Um, it's not going to be... Look how fun, right? Yeah. I think it's going to be really fun, and I think it's going to be a great color um, for me once it's done. I cannot say enough about the softness and like plushiness of this yarn. It feels so good. Um, I did the, the fun thing about this pattern is that you start off knitting flat. So you're building, you're building depth in the neck, some length in the neck, um, instead of, you know, incorporating short rows, uh, like while you're knitting in the round. So that was really fun to do. Um, and then you pick up, um, you pick up later on for the, the neck band, which I did. The collar fits really nice on me. Um, what kind of bind off did you do on the collar? Did you I do didn't. it in pattern? I did. I did. Okay. Shoot. Don't shoot. I was just wondering. No, because it should match the bottom of my sweater. Nobody's oh, well. going to go look and be like, oh, look, your bottom hem, hem doesn't match your neck. So none of you, if you see me out in like, the wild, don't at me. Um, anyway, I, uh, I really love... I love the colors. I love the transition here. I am doing, um, so I split this up the way that I did it. And um, really cool, the person who knit this sample uh, reached out on, um, I think it was on Instagram, and um, led me to her project page on Ravelry. I can't remember her name right this very second, but... Um, uh, so I looked at her project page and like her notes and how she ended up doing the transition. So for my size, this is um, from the back because it goes up a little bit higher. This is 10 and a half inches. But when you measure from the front here, it's seven inches. Um, so I did seven inches of this color and then five, five and a half inches, sorry, seven and a half inches, seven and a half inches, um, five and a half inches and then two inches of ribbing okay. on the bottom so that they're all in like in seven inch uh, blocks. So from the front to the, from here, like down would be about 21 inches. Um, but when you incorporate the additional inches from the back, it'll be somewhere around 23, 24 inches, which is exactly the size of a sweater that I like to, uh, the length of a sweater that I like to have. It fits, it hits me right like at the weight, like a little bit below the waistline, like yeah. right where my front pocket kind of starts. Um, so I decided I really love the look of a tubular bind off. So I wanted to incorporate that bind off into the sweater. So I didn't do much, um, but I bound off this much so far. Um, I really think the tubular bind off just creates a really nice finished, finished look to it. It's one of my favorites. Um, so because this is two by two, what I ended up doing was converting it to a one by one rib, um, which I'll show you what I did. And I kind of, I think it'll be okay, but I kind of wish I did it the reverse. So in order to, to convert from a two by two to a one by one rib, um, I ended up slipping um, kind of like almost cabling in a way. Um, you're pulling, so you have your two knit stitches. So you're knitting one of those and you have your two knit stitches followed by your two purl stitches. So I'm knitting that first stitch, and then now I have left a knit stitch and a purl stitch. So what I do is bring the purl stitch over, um, then purl it, knit that stitch, and kind of like repeat it. Cause you, so you're swapping them. I thought you, when I saw you doing it, I thought you brought this purl stitch behind your neck. So that's my point is I did it, I think I did it backwards, um, which is still going to be fine. So I brought I brought the purl stitch behind the knit stitch. It should have been, yeah. Because look, so this is the back of the sweater. Yeah. 
right? So you can't really like see how seamless that is. But if you look here, you can see oh yeah the little cables. In that's so, interesting because I oh maybe it is. Yeah. So when you so oh, if you look, this, this is the front of my sweater. So you see these little yeah um, like cable. They're like little cables. <laughs> But on the back of the sweater, like the inside of the sweater, you don't. It's nice and straight. Why not just take it out and fix it? No. Nope. I don't know how to rip back that tube. I think it's going to be just fine. You're not going to. You're. You're. Really it may. Gonna, uh, it may correct stuff. itself once. That's you what I'm thinking. Block it. Yeah. But note to self, like um, again, I did that while I was socializing and chatting, so it didn't really, you know. It's it's my fault and and honestly it's not the end of the world it's still gonna look beautiful, um, but I really like the tubular, um, and I think you're right. Once you know, it's it will it will fix it. Can I see the sure. bound off parts? Do the bound off oh. parts look the same? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I do think when you um, when you block it, it makes yeah because it's gonna it's bit. gonna roll back over. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I just thought that was really interesting because from you know from the backside, you really can't, you know, it looks pretty straight. So note to self: not the end of the world. But In, just thought I would share that with you all. Excuse me. There Did you a, mm -hmm. look into if there was? So you're doing the sewn bind off. Mm -hmm. Did you look to see is there a version of a sewn bind off for a two by two rib? Yes. That was going to be my next statement. Okay. Um, while we were at the yarn shop, a couple of people had showed me some videos on how to convert the two by two, uh, rib to a sewn bind off, like at the same time. But again, like I was saying, I was just socializing and I didn't want to do anything new quote unquote. Cause I've, I've converted before like doing a tubular cast on. Um, but you know, I didn't. I didn't want to take the time to uh, to do that. But you know, you do yeah. you. You take the time. Take you it do. out. Go back. I'm sure I'm going to get a ton of comments to say just take it out. It's a beautiful sweater. You're going to regret it. Blah blah blah. I won't. I promise. It'll be. It'll be great. I'm really Good. happy with it. Yeah. So um, love the pattern. <laughs> love the sweater. I'm hoping to finish my bind off today, depending on where I fall with my homework, um, and then pick up the sleeves. I would love <coughs> best case scenario to have this done um, this week. The entire sweater? Well, I just have to do the two sleeves. Yeah, and sleeves after, will... Right? On a worsted weight sweater, yeah, sleeves should, will go should pretty go quick. Fine. And yeah. I'll knit, I, knit them, uh, I knit my sleeves one at a time, um, but on small circumference needles, because that's just where I'm comfortable. Um, nice job. Thanks. But yeah, I thought that was interesting. The mm -hmm. like that, how that looks. But it'll be great. Great. Work. Thanks. So it's super great. I highly recommend this yarn. I can't wait to get more of it because um, it's kind of like my new obsession. Okay. 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 All right. But look, this is the problem, right? When you're doing. Oh, you know what? I overheard you saying to somebody about how it twists up on itself. So the same thing happens when I'm doing the Bargello thing, right? Yeah. Because you have a. You're coming I think when I'm doing directions. that, I have three feet of yeah. yarn in my hands. So I run it through my fingers. I just started doing that. So when I have a, a large amount of yarn or a large yeah. length of yarn, I will run it through my fingers because it helps keep it from twisting up on itself. Or if it does, like I know right where what you can feel it mm -hmm. immediately and you're not getting to the end of it and there's a knot or something. So it makes it a little bit easier to work with that and prevent it from happening to begin with. Yeah. Kevin got a picture of me knitting or trying to bind, bind off. off at like midnight after having multiple adult beverages was not probably the best idea. You know what I could have done too? You could have just worked on your socks. Sure. Sure. Uh, so I'm really happy with this. I'm sorry. I really am. Well, we I'm are all happy that you're excited. happy. Oh, and that great. We, th we all think it's going to be super cool. I think so, too. And Thank we're you so for happy. Support. I really appreciate this. We're support. so happy with your hem. I am, too. Just happy. Just good. overall happy. Good. 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 That's all that good. matters. It is. You do you, boo. I am. You're doing me. <laughs> Done with him. <laughs> all right. My last whip is living in my Paradise Island mm. bag that we got at Knit City Mon No Vogue last year. Paradise, yes. Vogue last year. 2023. 
This is my Cozy Classic Raglan, number two, by Jesse May Designs. Here's the pattern. I am knitting this out of Mayak Tibetan Cloud in the colorway Flame, which is a salmon color. This is a DK way. It's a sport light DK. When I swatched with this, I got 20 stitches over four inches using the recommended needle for the body, which is a US seven or a 4.5 millimeter. That was the same gauge that I got on my previous sweater with the Sonder Yarn Co. With that sweater, what I did is I went up a needle size and I knit the large yep. sweater size. So for this one, what I'm doing is I'm using the recommended needles. So a US 2.5, which is a three millimeter, a US three, which is the 3.25 millimeter and a US seven. And I'm doing the fifth size, which is the extra large because I'm getting more stitches per inch than what the pattern calls for. I'm getting 20 pattern called for 18. So I kind of just wanted to do like an experiment and see which one fit better. Yeah. Going up the needle size or just going up a sweater size using the recommended needles. I am here. It's so really good. I, I can't get did over my it collar and my short rows split for sleeves. And I don't know, actually I have my thing. So this is another thing that I did. And I learned this from my, his home office sweater that I knit when I separated for sleeves, I put in a stitch marker on the row where the separation happens so that I can measure from here, the length from sleeve separation and trying to measure oh, underneath. from underneath. Cause that can be a little finicky. Yeah. Especially when you don't have a sleeve there. <clears throat> So right. this gives me a good measuring a smart point. smart idea. So from, I don't know, what would you say? I have like seven inches now? Eight? Yeah, maybe. So I'm probably halfway done with the body of this. It's really, it's so good. The color is fantastic. I think the color is going to be great. And the feeling of the yarn is really nice. Yes, I knit with this yarn before. I yeah. made the Oslo hat with it. It's a beautiful base. Mm -hmm. It is a two-ply yarn. And it's just, it really is. It's gorgeous. It has a little bit of a halo. I don't know if halo. you could see. Oops, sorry, guys. Halo. So a little bit of a halo. It's very soft, very yeah. um, airy at the same time. What it's, I it like here, light. it is light. And yeah. I can already tell the difference between this and my previous version. Like, this is not as airy as the other one since I knit that on a US 8. Yeah. There's a little, you know, more space between the stitches, a little more airflow. This probably is what the sweater was meant to be knit at. This a little bit of a tighter gauge. So that makes sense. But it's just a really easy, basic raglan. And I think that there's a lot of options to customize this. I, after the last one I mentioned how I love the short rows in here and the amount of length, extra length I got in the back. So it will definitely be a pattern that I reference yeah. for other sweaters if it doesn't have the short rows included or if I don't like the short row method, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. For this, I did a calls for a tubular cast on, yeah. which I did. And that's why you have the smaller needle you cast on with a much smaller needle and for your setup rounds so i think it's like four rows or something you work on the smaller needle before you go to your actual ribbing size and then yeah but just a basic raglan i'm excited for this i think I it's going to be really i think it's going to be a nice color on me and that's the thing about a simple pattern is that you really make the statement with the color, your color choices, you know? Yeah. Like your, your previous one, that color was a, a great color on you too. It like really brought out, um, you know, that green in your eyes and stuff, the blue and the blue. Yeah. The blue. So what else can I say about that? I think that's all it's again, basic. It's nice to have that though. Sometimes it is, it really but is. that's why I cast on the hat yeah. because 
I went a week straight just knitting on the muscle burrow right. and that was just stock net. This once I got past the sleeve separation, then it was just like, okay, I'm just like knitting, 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 and I would yeah. take a break and do some of the Bargello stuff. But I needed something with a little interest in it, so that's why the Park View hat came into view. Um, and no pun intended. Correct. Speaking of hats, I bought a pattern Thursday because I was going to cast on again, and I was like, Kevin, stop it. Just don't do that to yourself. But I did buy a new hat. hat. No, no negative self talk. It is a hat it. pattern. It just came out. We initially saw it, or yeah, we initially saw it at Vogue Knitting Live. Hope was wearing it. Yeah. She had knit some in her yarn. I thought the design was beautiful. She had done the test knit for it. So when I saw that it was released, I immediately went and the pattern was released with a hat and mitts. So it is called the Ajax hat by yeah. Stephen. Brent? Oh, Barent? Barent. Um, he's Lemon Tree Forge. Lemon Tree on Instagram. So, so here's the. Is sweet. You can get the hat pattern for $5 or the hat and the mitt bundle for 9 So I bought the bundle. Um, it is DK weight. Oh, it's oh, so go. good. So this is the hat. It's so yeah beautiful. Yep. Like seeing it in person, I was sold as soon as yeah. I saw it on a hope. I was like, okay, when this pattern comes out, like definitely want to buy it. So the mitts are so cool. Same design, and here are the mitts. I just think they're so good. Mm -hmm. So, if you're a hat person and a mitt, fingerless mitt, snatch this pattern up. How much yarn do you think it takes a skein to do both? Or do you think you need two skeins to do both? I would think you need probably two. two. Yeah. And it's, so it says that the, it's a mock cable twisted stitch. Yeah. Yeah. There are no, it's not cables. Yeah. Just, so check it out. If you guys like knitting hats and mitts, I think the this is a good option. And for nine dollars to get do both, it. what do I have? I know I, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I want to do it out of stash yarn. Yeah, I just think it's such a good, uh, good pattern. Yeah. So I'm excited to get that cast on. So take a look at it, Ajax. We'll link it down below. The can you remind me because I didn't I didn't put that in yet. Yeah, because I also have to add something else to it. Okay, too. cool. So that is all of our FOs and whips. What? Yeah. What? So let's talk about yarn dyeing. Some yarn dyeing. Okay. Here, yeah. may I have the bag, please? You so may. I've dyed up some old like some colorways that typically are in I there. I don't even know where we got that bag. This from. is from Montreal. Yeah, that's we right. We were within walking distance of the Super C. <laughs> that's right. So we would walk to Super C and get our food. We did. Alright, so let's look. All right, so this is not a one of a kind. This one is on, I believe this is on DK7525 also. This is called Electric Meadow. I love this. So you have some blues. That blue grays, is stunning. Stunning. Some green in here. So that's Electric Meadow. This is a new colorway also. Mm -hmm. I showed this a while ago, but I... I knit this up at, or I dyed this as a special request and now I've added it to the shop. This is called Dreamcatcher. So this is also available on the DK and Fingering Weight 7525. So this has a lot of white and then you have some gray and then speckles. And what's really fun with the speckles, the powder that I use for the speckles is the way that it breaks you get some of these orangey bits, but then you can see like, you get some yellow and some green. There's some of the orange. You get some browns, different tones of the green. So it's fun. Yeah, it's really cool. That one. Oh, this one is a one of a kind. Yeah, look at all those, those, those speckles and stuff in there. Cool. Also, this is on fingering and DK as well. This is called Earthy Elegance. So it's like a taupey color and then you have some yellow and green speckles i dyed up some more rhubarb on both dk and fingering 
Oh, I'm just going to use your yarn to do that hat and mitts. I don't know if I have a tonal right now because it would look best in a tonal. I okay, think. well, get dying. This is a one of a kind as well. This is called Citrus Spice. I love this. I know. All right. So this is interesting. This one is with... This was dyed with dye powder that came in the kit Ray bought me, which started this whole dyeing yeah. journey. So that I can never... I love it so much, but I can't replicate can't it because I don't it. know what the dye powder yeah. is. First come, first serve. Do you only have this on DK? D probably okay i think so this is on the 75 percent superwash merino 25 percent nylon four ply dk 245 I yards dyed up some snowy river so snowy river and Dreamcatcher are very similar except this is blue mm -hmm. wait this one's blue snowy river and this is gray I just this isn't, stuff. yeah, no, this is a one of a kind. This is just a dark gray and it has some like brown, orange, the gray and brown look so speckles, good gray and rust. What's this? Oh, this is also earthy elegance. Same. Oh, sorry. Yep. No, okay. that's okay. This one was a leftover dye. This is called Twilight Shimmer. So you have a lot of black and grays in here. So very Ooh. variegated. That is. I don't know if there's a fingering weight of this. I'm, I don't recall. No, I think just DK. Let's see. Is this? Yeah, that's Electric oh, Meadow. This I one is called job. Enchanted Shadows. This is cool. I love the darks. Yeah, so you have some greens yeah. and dark greens, and I think there's a little bit of gray in there. So Enchanted Shadows. This one is called Faded Teddy. It reminded me of a Faded Teddy Bear. Yeah. I, Yeah. And kind of of a... I forget. Another thing. So Faded Teddy. That's all different shades of browns. This is really, really nice. And just to show, this one is called Emerald Enchantment. So it's very... It's the lighter version almost yeah. of this. Yep of enchanted shadows so this is on fingering weight this one is called star spangled tangle <laughs> i thought it was so funny so this so good. was speckles of the blue that dye powder from the one that you gave me mm -hmm. the kit and then this is a colorway that i just a dye powder i don't know how to use really well it doesn't in my opinion, it didn't work well for me in liquid form, but it speckles really beautifully, and it has this peachy red yeah. tone to it. Look how pretty. Okay, so I do have Earthy Elegance on fingering weight okay, also. Okay, good to know. And then this one is called Autumn Grove. This is some green... Actually... Some greens and browns and yellows and oranges. It was actually. I don't know if the other, the actual color. I hadn't, this light green in here wasn't what I was going for. Which so when I, I re, re, yeah, I didn't do my calculations correctly. So I actually have this. All of the same colors except the green's much darker. But I don't think that one's out here. But there is a lot of yarn. I probably put up... There's a ton. Like, honestly, I... I probably put, a, like, 200 skeins up on yeah, the website. And I had a hard like time picking. Two weeks. So definitely check it out. There's a bunch of DK, a bunch of fingering weights. The single brew update. Yeah, there's a bunch of single brews. It was really fun to do that. And to kind of just go through my dye stocks that I that were aging and needed to be used up, clean up any of the containers that I was using. And do you think any of these um, could be repeatable? Well, these are. I know those are. But like any of your single brews, you think like you would add them to your... No, because they're not... I Oh, none of them. When I do those, yeah. I can't measure, especially when yeah, I'm just rinsing true. out a container. Like I can't measure Good the point. amount of dye powder. Right. Um, and with dye stocks, they can act very differently 
the longer they sit mm -hmm. compared to when you mix up a fresh batch of it. So, yeah, so that can, it wouldn't be consistent enough to try to recreate any of those. Okay. So that, yeah, and I think, what else did I, I know Snowy River, I said rhubarb. I feel like I did another one that's, I think I did Iron Mountain. I may have put some more Iron Mountain mm. in the shop. But yeah, check it out. Check the website out. There's a awesome. bunch of stuff in there. Deals at the ready.com. And now let's talk about some Owl Post. Okay. Owl Post is stuff that some of you lovely people have sent to us that we get to show you guys and share. So one of the first things, this is a little bit different for us, is we got... Yeah, this is kind of right? cool. Yeah, so yeah. this we, we don't typically get to show stuff like this. So we were contacted by the team over at I Love L-U-V fabrics f-a-b-r-i-x and they have a monthly fabric club and the club comes with a half a yard of 10 different designer fabrics so they're imported from all over the world so you can get them from england linens from ireland velvet from belgium italy and france so they sent their most recent one to us here, I'm going to give these to you first. You're going to give them to me? Yeah, just so you could show some of the fabrics. Okay. So if you're a, a, a sewist, this might be something fun for you to... Yeah, so um, it's a monthly kit. Yeah, for you to check this out. This feels nice. Yeah, here goes some of the fabrics that came in the most recent club. I don't know what to say. Me neither. That's why I'm going to show you guys this. Yeah. This is like a heavy, like... Uh, suede kind of material velvet probably velvet chip is probably hating us right now this is fun yeah that one's really cool this had like each one of these is like felt almost it's, raised. it's like raised and soft different kind of fabric that's fun then this is like a linen you have no idea what you're speaking feel that of. i don't i don't know okay this is Another one, it's textured, cute. Anyway, um, so there's a code Yes. for you all, if you're interested, if you all sew and you would like to get half a yard of like these amazing things. Uh, this is Ralph, Ralph Lauren, Ralph Lauren. Yes, so if you go to their website, which is ilovefabric.com, you can use the code CLUB24 for free shipping for anything on their website uh, until the end of the year. That's amazing. So thank you very much, Michelle, Because like these for obviously get to us pretty heavy, right? Us. So free shipping is a big, is a, oh, yeah. a really good deal for sure. Yeah. So thank so you, Michelle, awesome. and the team over here. I'll take that because okay. the other ones over here. Perfect. Team over at I Love Fabrics. Dot com. And then so then um, we have two additional things that we got. Um, this is from Fly and Free Fibers. Um, they're on Instagram. They have a website as well. I'll link them down below. It's actually a farm here in Connecticut. Um, they raise um, these uh, like unique breeds um, that um, and create these like amazing kits and yarns. This is uh, this was a gift for me. Um, and if I, she said, if I wanted to share with Kevin, I could. So these are for me. This is an Easter egg felting kit, which is super cute. So you have your, um, I haven't opened this yet, but you get, um, you get the actual fo like egg forms, um, cores, they call them. And what you're going to do, so here are your little egg forms. You've, you'll finish felting them um, to shape, you know, or shaping them a little bit like this. And then you use the um, little bits of fiber in here to decorate your Easter eggs. There's two of them in here, which is super cute. And um, yeah, like you just get creative, come in a little, little box like that. I thought this was really cute. This is on their website there. Um, and check them out. We'll have a link down below. But I thought this was really sweet. Thank you very much for the gift. 
I absolutely love it. If you um, if you want, you can scan that um, QR there, code. QR code, and it'll go right to your website. You're welcome. And then the next thing I forgot about this, but then I remembered. So there's a new pattern that just yes. came out on Ravelry. I have this link down below, a, like a special section, so you can see it. The designer's name is Stacy Booth, and she has a couple patterns out, but she just released a new one called the Candy Bobble Cow. So it is a DK weight pattern. Her pattern, she suggests using the Lamb and Kid Todd, and then she used Needles at the Ready Apollo Base, which is the 8020 that I actually don't have any longer. But she used the colorway Sidewalk Chalk, and she thought the color reminded her of... Remember these candies on the paper and how you'd eat the candy and then totally. eat the paper too sometimes because it was stuck? So, the pattern is available on Ravelry or on her website. Mm -hmm. And she would like to give two of you a free copy of the pattern. So, if you would like that pattern, down below in comments, leave the word... Bobble. Bobble in your comment. And then we will pick winners before the next podcast. Yeah. What's really awesome too is I have her blog um, and website linked too. She talks about like journey knitting, which is really interesting. Um, so give it a go. Read about it. It's it's kind of, um, you know, using that knitting time to, um, to be like mindful and uh, really cool concept. Um, it's so, journal knitting. Yes. What did I say? Journey. Oh. Journal. journal. <laughs> to kind of journal your day and like, um, be mindful of everything uh, but it could be a journey as well you know take a journey on over to her uh, website give it a, a check out really sweet to like see your yarn yeah so here's the, the cow so it's long mm -hmm. it's right so it's cute oh this and this is the opposite way that's sidewalk chalk with then the lamb and kid and that's lamb and kid with the sidewalk chalk as the bobbles So a nice, nice little fun yeah. detail on that. Totally. So that's really fun to see. Here's another version kind of like that's like heavily your, bobbled. Yeah. Oh, like you're missing some of the candy that were you were eating some of the candy. Because yeah. you never started at the top, right? Did you always start in the middle? I did. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. You can Super do it scrappy. Cute. So yeah, check out the pattern. Yeah. And um, thank you very much, Stacy. That's really cool yeah, to see. Yeah, it was really, really sweet. Okay, um, next, our wonderful friends, which we need to make a, a trip back out their way. I know. As well. Um, our, um, our friends over at Yarnia, uh, Jen, Kathleen, and Amanda, heard about our kid along, and they sent over some prizes, which are great. You may have heard of this, um, this company before, but uh, this is the Woobles, right? Um, there's the, oh my gosh, I have all of these. This is the unicorn, Billy the unicorn. We have the dragon, which I, or the Fred, Fred the dinosaur, which I still have yet to do that one. And Pierre the penguin. So these three will be part of a, uh, a prize for our kid along, yes. which is super cute. Oh, you can see I have a wop wooble right here. He's, they're very, very cute. That's the narwhal, right? This is the narwhal. Um... They're super fun to do. I, uh, if you remember, I had made a little bit of a mistake on this one. I miscounted, and I didn't think I had enough of the white yarn, but I had plenty. Plenty. Um, so that was user error. But it comes with everything you need. It comes with the plastic eyes. It also comes with a crochet hook, um, and it comes with if you don't want to use the safety eyes, it comes with black yarn that you can use. Oh, maybe I'll use some leftover black yarn to do my. It's going to be a different weight, though, it will. probably. I know. Um, but anyway, they, they uh, crochet up really, really cute. They're, they're really sweet. And they also have uh, video tutorials <clears throat> um, every step of the way. Yeah, I believe, it. isn't there a QR code inside that you can yep. scan and it takes you right to the tutorial? It takes you right there, but it also takes you to, um, to download the PDF as well. So you okay. don't have to go off the website or the video tutorial. Um, and then what's really neat about this is because it... You know, this could also help you learn how to crochet. Mm -hmm. So sometimes starting a lot of the amigurumis, you start, you know, from the center out. 
Um, and sometimes that centerpiece could be difficult to like to seal up. Um, so a lot of times people use like a magic ring. Um, what's great is that they have that first piece already started for you. So you nice. can just start crocheting right into that um, and don't have to worry about that. Though they, did, they do give you some tutorials on how to... Um, how to make that shape as well very cool yeah so that was really sweet yes thank you ladies, ladies thank you so much we definitely need to make a trip out that way again yes i agree yeah we we're actually talking about that uh this, this weekend. weekend because um hope and keisha stopped at yarnia on the way to skin yeah. so next up is break in the bank break in the bank uh-oh what's wrong my yarn purchases at the bottom. Can I just say again? I don't. I know I mentioned this last time. These bags are so good. Um, I will have this link down below as well. This is uh, Threads Company. Company dot com. Um, our friend decided to start selling the bags that he makes. They're so well made, and this is absolutely huge. I have. Yeah. I literally have. I keep this <coughs> by my couch. I've got every single one of my active projects in here. And then also in here too, I have one of my acquisitions that we got yesterday, um, which I'll pull out and I can show you right away. Okay. Okay. So this, of course, we had to support our friends, um, Keisha and Hope. Yes. Um, so this is Hope's new base. Hope has, uh, her yarn company is Hope Made Yarn Co. Um, it's, this is her new chunky base. It's 100% extra fine superwash merino chunky. It, the softness on this, I did you feel this? I did yesterday. Is absolutely incredible. I absolutely love um, this color. This is called Snowed In. She has really great colors. I think mine has something to do with being snowed in. Maybe. I mean, they're a great color. She has another one that's called Sweater Weather, which I really wanted to grab as well. That is, there's a picture of her and Keisha wearing love notes that they both knit out of oh, Sweater Weather. so good. Sweater Weather. Sweater Weather. So I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do a simple chunky hat with this yarn. I think it's going to be absolutely incredible. I think you could do that Brooklyn Tweed one with it that I did. Yeah? The basic ribbed. I don't so it remember gives if me, it's bulky or chunky. This is a two-ply bulky. It's 109 yards uh, for 100 grams. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see how it how it knits up. She only had a limited quantity of the chunky base because it's her brand new base. Um, but, yeah, I was super. I, I saw it. I grabbed it, and I went to go put it back, and I was like, nope. I kept it. So. That's uh, that's purchase number one. Nice, thanks. Are we just keep going? Keep going. Well, all oh. of mine are over there. I don't have any of mine over here. Oh, here you are. Thanks. You're welcome. Oh, I do have some right in front of me. Yeah. Do you want to show what you got from? Um, yeah. From Hope. So from Hope, I picked up a skein of her DK base. My colorway that's is called cool. Hazy Shade of Winter. Oh. She had a sweater knit up in this colorway with some green color work in it i thought this might be really good for the ajax hat whenever i go dk i immediately think hats I know. the single skein is perfect for a hat it's a quick knit if you it's need a good something for a gift too. so this is a beige like a beige color there's definitely some yellow undertones in here and, the and just a nice. very light speckle it's really beautiful the yeah. the sample that she had this colorway is gorgeous so I grabbed it, put it back, and then I went back and bought it like right towards the mm -hmm. end of the day. I almost, I had actually almost wound this up and cast on the hat yesterday, but that just, that was too much work for me. I know. I wanted to cast this on. So this too. is 85% um, superwash, extra fine merino, and 15% nylon. It's a four ply, so you get 246 yards. It's mm -hmm. very soft and fuzzy. You can see there's a bit of a halo on here. Um, and what's really nice is a lot of Hope's yarns just are incredibly thing. soft and she goes like, she is very sensitive to Merino as well. So if you even find Merino a little scratchy for you, she looks for bases that she can also wear. Mm -hmm. Um, so she goes for the extra fine Merino with a high micron count. Yeah. A high micron. No, low, the lower the micron count, the softer it is. So like a 19.5 micron is softer than a 22 micron. 
I think it's the other way around. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. So, Hope Major on Co. Yeah, super. Um, she's a lot of. See, I need to learn that because I thought it was. I thought it was different. I thought it was the other way around. Yeah, no, it's the lower the number, the softer. And then from Keisha. So Keisha You're right. is Keisha. simply vintage designs. And what's really fun with Keisha's She's a hoot. They're they're both, both I mean, honestly, we had so many laughs. So Keisha takes pictures and she turns those pictures into like knitting jewelry. So she has either necklaces or earrings, stitch markers, progress keepers. Some of the necklaces have stitch markers or progress keepers on there. So I got two of her stitch marker progress keeper sets. It blows my mind that these are pictures that she's taken, right? So she takes them. She has a program where she can like minimize the picture and keep the quality of it so that it's so small. So here's the first set that I got. Oh my God, they're so pretty. I know. So she took these pictures and then I don't even know how she makes these. Like, so some of them are, yeah, some of them are glass and some of them are resin covered. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. And then these two have pictures on both sides. And these are the that nice like brassy feel where the yeah. other ones I showed were silver. Yeah. So she has those as two different options. And then if you flip these over, they have other pictures of hers in there. So they're double sided. So, so good. Yeah. Um, she has a lot of in the pictures are typically nature inspired. So the yep. flowers are trees, from what I could tell. Mm-hmm. And there were some starfish, I yeah, think, in one of she them. Was sold out. And so, yeah, so they're all nature inspired. Yeah. Um, I was really inspired by the necklaces and um, I usually don't wear, I don't have necklaces that I would, that I usually wear. Um, But I saw this, I saw Keisha actually wearing one of the longer medallion, the longer ones that she has with the little beads. Um, and I was really drawn to that, but then I thought like maybe simpler. So this is the one I got. I want to, I want you to see this picture. Cause like it's, this is, this one happens to have a, gla- have the glass um, oh, okay. over it. Oh, I don't know if you can see it. You can. No. Anyway. So it's a beautiful, like it's, it's legit a tree with like the sunset's sun very fiery looking. Yeah. The colors are just so good it, in person. It's, it's even more stunning um the the quality is great i also went for that like brassy look yeah um just because i do wear a lot of like earth tones and stuff and i thought that that would really go well with some of the things that i wear um yeah i can't say enough i i've been um i've been absolutely loving wearing it yeah for the past two days for the past two days (laughs) so so, also while we were at Skane, we've upgraded our Delic bags. Oh, okay. so we love our Delic bags. They're one of our favorite products. We both have their messenger bag, which yeah. we take to uh, events with us. Yep, they're great to just throw on. But at the last one at Vogue, I don't know if I mentioned this. I don't think I did. The strap on it. Just the way that you wear it, right across your shoulder, it was just like digging into for, my neck. We wear it was it for the whole time, so it's a long for two days, and we do it at Ryan Beck, and you know we bring them to Maryland wherever we go. So when we went to Skeen, it's funny Keisha already bought one of the mini backpacks, and we have the large one, and that's what we brought with us this weekend for our clothes for the you yeah. know overnight and the next day, and our toiletries and all that. So it's a great travel bag, but instead of taking the messenger bag we saw that they have the mini backpack and keisha had already filled hers up it had a bunch of stuff they had the colors that we use i have olive and so we picked these up at skein yeah so they're just they're smaller than the big backpack they're larger than the messenger they have your flat bottom there's a ton of storage inside there is there's one zipper inside and areas to put like some of your notions. Mm-hmm. We use it for literally for like 
when we're at a Yarny event or festival, we always have cough drops, gum, granola bars. You know, if we bring stuff like buttons or pins yes. or things to give away, they're in here. So we just thought this would be another good option, especially with some of yep. the events that we know that we're going to be going to this year. Like we're going to Flock in August, maybe Knit City, Toronto in May, Rhinebeck in October, our vacay in April. So it's just a, I think that will be better for us because yes. it will sit on our shoulders like a backpack, but not be as big and cumbersome as a full size backpack. And I like the magnetic closures. Yes. You know? Um, but yeah, like Kevin said, it's, um, there are pockets hidden like all over the place and I think it's going to be really nice. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, the last thing I think, right? This is the last purchase. I believe so. Okay. We did very well for ourselves. So after watching Michael last week at Peace for Peace Crafting, he showed this book. It is from John Arbin Textiles. It is their annual. This is issue three. So it has some patterns in here. It talks about some yarns. Oh, Oh. Yeah, it's nice too. Well, those are cool. Oh. So it has here a chat with Marie Wallen. So it's just a nice little table book, right? But with some pattern. Oh. We actually, so this was waiting on our front porch when yeah. we got home. So we didn't have a chance to look at any of this stuff. No, yet. I haven't. So yeah. let's just, I was, saw these hats. Because you know I love a hat. Who needs 5,000 hats? We do. This guy. Right, so here goes some hats that are in here. So, just got that. But one of the reasons I bought it too is, as you guys know, I'm on the hunt for that color work sweater, and we're pretty sure we found it. And I was thinking of knitting it out of John Arbin yarn. Oh my God, there's puzzles in here too. Like so I bought pictures. their color cards and the book. Mm -hmm. The shipping was really affordable. This came incredibly quick, but each color card this is their DK weight. So this is some um, Exmoor, 50% Exmoor blue faced, 30% blue faced Lester, 20% Luster breeds, and it's a four ply DK. And it just shows what colors they have available so that when I am ready to start knitting that color work sweater, I can use this to make my decision. This one is for their 100% Cordale sport weight. This is for a uh, blue face Lester in a Falklands Merino. I love those little cards. Those yeah, so, so it's cool. just nice to get an idea. Yeah. And this way you can start planning out some colors and you have them with you. And I'll now always have these. And I think it was pretty, if I remember, I think it was pretty affordable to get. But I get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven color cards for the entire. So this is their, I believe, their entire line. And all of the colors that they currently carry. Um, what's really what I've been I've been looking through some of this. Uh, there's crochet patterns in here as well, which is really cool. So when you put an order in for that, I might. There's a scarf in here that's really cute. Speaking of crochet patterns, you guys know that we love our emotional support chickens, and I saw this morning on the Instagram for Knitting Tree LA that they are currently working on a crocheted version of that pattern. So I believe it's in testing and it may be out fairly soonish. So we'll keep you guys updated once we see it on For their sure. Instagram. Or you can go over and follow Knitting Tree LA on Instagram and catch that update when they make it on their Instagram page. Good job. And that is all of our break in the bank. So now that's all the knitting that's stuff. It. So we're just going to talk about what we've been reading and watching. Okay. I'll do reading... <sighs> quick because i have Ooh, a lot sorry the weekend's catching up with me i have finished oh yeah pages. we finished a lot of books i read a lot of books you did and sure. we didn't discuss it in the last episode no we did not so this is really a month's worth of knitting for me yeah reading reading <laughs> so i've been reading the spellbound is it spellbound series I think so. It's a cozy 
mystery. Yeah, Spellbound. It's a little cozy mystery series. So I pretty much have read books two through now eight from that. It's a series by Annabelle Chase. We are following Emma Hart, who is a 25-year-old woman who, until she entered this town, thought she was another normal human being, finds out that she is a supernatural. Mm. And this town is cursed. And once you enter, if you are a supernatural being, you cannot leave. <clears throat> so she is stuck there. And this is her navigating life as... Somebody who's just finding out that they're supernatural. And she is a lawyer, so she has become the... Did she become the public defender? Yes. Public defender for the town. town. You know, it's cheesy. It's an easy read. It takes me, you know, maybe three nights to to get through the book. Three or four nights, depending how much I read. But it's super cute. I've been enjoying it. I needed something a little bit easy after whatever I had read beforehand. So... I finish book eight Friday night and I'll start book nine tonight. Um, I have also jumped on the bandwagon, y'all. I went to, I went to Barnes and Noble and I was looking for something and I don't know what, I think maybe I was just looking to get out of the house. So I went to Barnes and Noble and I was just walking around looking at stuff. And I walked into the fantasy section and I picked this up. Hmm. and i read this oh you know what it was part of it is i had been thinking a lot about my morning routine and i spend a lot of time on my phone in the morning and i wanted to get in the habit of reading instead of being on my phone yeah so i typically read on my kindle in bed but i was like oh let's just get a physical book like I think it's so cozy to be on the couch with a physical book Mm -hmm. and like a cup of coffee under a blanket this time of year and just reading. So I was like, I'll get a physical book. So I picked this up when I saw it. And, oh, that's why. TJ Klune's new hardcover copy of Brother Song came out. That's what took me there. And then I browsed and I found this. Bought it, read it, loved it. It's good. It's... You know, it gives me little Beauty and the Beast vibes when you first kind of start out. Um, I get a little Vampire Diaries, Damon and... Stefan. Stefan and Elena vibes sometimes. It starts off quite slow, but then there was this moment that I got to. And then I couldn't stop. And I read for three hours straight. And then... I took a shower and went to Barnes and Noble and I picked up book two and book three because I couldn't be in that predicament again where I didn't have the next book to start. So now I'm reading book two, which is A Court of Mist and Fury. And um, from what I understand, this is the best book out of this series currently. It's great. It's really good. So, yeah. So I'm now a Sarah J. Moss fan. Book talk girly. And this is the series that made me blush uh, often. I don't think it will make me blush based on the titles of some of the books that I've read. Correct. Correct. So that is... Like Iron Shaft or whatever. No, it's not. (laughs) Oh, what a dork. No. Um, So that is what I've been reading. Great. You accomplished a lot. I have this listed... I don't. I thought I had talked about it, but I finished um, a Wizard of Earthsea, um, mm-hmm. the Earthsea Cycle uh, One book by Ursula um, K. Le, Le Guin. Le you did Guin? talk about that because I think people I did. made comments. You weren't sure if you were going to continue, right? And somebody had said that their, I think it was their husband had read book one and had the same feelings about the writing style, but that it drastically improved in book two. Okay, and that they had recommended going on with the series. Okay, cool. So um, I probably will go on with the series. Um, I, I'm i a little... I'm a little cheap. Um, you are, with man. My, he, y'all, with my book purchases? No, in life in general, unless it comes yes. to yarn. Uh, Let me tell you guys, I kid you not, when he's like, oh, I don't want to buy a new pair of sneakers. I was like, Ray, it's, only, it's less than three skeins of yarn. Like, just buy the sneakers. That's how I have to talk to him because... He, 
he has no issue buying a sweater's quantity of yarn, but he has an issue of buying a $5 book on Audible. I think it was $11. That still. So regardless, I, I do believe can't. that. You, so anyway, I used my, my uh, Amazon. What's it called? Audible credit? No. Unlimited. On Amazon Unlimited for my books. Usually. And that one was, Earthsea one, the first one was free. <laughs> so you can't that. read the second so one So the second one, I didn't feel like spending $11 it that can't. night. So I moved on. Um, I read, let's see, I finished a psalm for the Wild Built. Uh, it's the Monk and Robot uh, book number one by Becky Chambers. This one I thought was really, really cute. It's, um, it's the, the world... Um, had created robots and AI kind of completely like went went off and these robots became um, completely self-aware and self-sufficient and um, wanted to separate from humanity because they didn't want to feel like they were being oh that's him him I didn't know if it was outside birds or that no it's him. him he sounds like he's uh, ready for us to socialize with him mm-hmm um Anyway, it's a uh, it's kind of like a, a little bit of a journey um, for this human and this robot. The interaction is really cool. It's really cute. I want to continue the series. I highly recommend it. I thought it was a, a great feel good book. Um, I also finished Ready Player Two by Ernest Klein. I was kind of on the fence about this one. This was a audible. I listened to it. Um, Will Wheaton is the narrator. I actually found it very um, entertaining. It, definitely not as good as the first book, mm-hmm. but I still found it entertaining. I thought it was a good book. Um, I think I gave it like four stars. Okay. Three or four stars um, out of five, right? So, um, yeah, kept my interest. Uh, you learn more about that, the world, um, and like what happened. So, yeah, good. Good book. I'm currently reading now The Burning Witch 2, which is part of the Burning Witch series uh, by Delam. Uh, Delamock. I love this series. I love the characters. This is part of the um, the House Witch series that started. It was, I believe that series was three or four books. Um, I think it's three books. And then there's a transition book. And then this next series, which takes place about 20 years after the first series. Um, so our main character in the first se- series, this next series follows his daughter um they i the world building that they have in here is incredible the sarcasm the jokes it's um it's really i cannot recommend this series highly enough if you have not read the house witch um by the same author please give it a try it is such a great good feeling um kind of book um there's magic there's a lot of food in that one. He's I a, love food. Yeah, he's a chef. Um, it's it's great, and like the trouble that they all get into is just hysterical and suspenseful. It's uh, very very well done. So this is book two. I I'm probably gonna finish it tonight when I'm really sad because it just came out in November, which means I probably have to wait for another year for the third one to come out. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's always so hard. Um, and then listening to, I started listening again to, um, or picked up picked up where I left off, On the Mist of Avalon by Marion Zimmer, Zimmer Bradley. Uh, this is a book that was written in like the early 80s, 82 or 83, I think. It's it's my one of my all-time favorite books uh, ever. Kevin actually got me um, the the book, it's right up there, for, um, for Christmas. I used to have this in paperback, um, and I read it, probably like three times uh and then i don't know i lent it to somebody and then i never got it back um it's one of those series it's huge like generational um book it's the king arthur story um but from the like women a women's perspective um and more more appropriately the the um lady of the lake the lady of the lake yeah and morgane um it is just incredibly done the uh and i'm listening to it so it's being read by porter uh somebody davina porter her voice is like butter for me it's doing everything that it needs to do um 
it's absolutely stunning. The the character development. If you're not familiar with this series, give it a go. It's uh, it's it's definitely an investment, Hep. and it's slow, a slow burn. There's a lot of details in this. Um, you can't help but feel a certain way about all of the characters, and just the like the the fall of these people. Um, you know, like fall from grace, and like then you're you know King Arthur. Uh, and Guinevere, it's just a very interesting dynamic there. Um, it, it's just incredible. I can't say enough about this book. So anyway, I just uh, I was I had just finished Ready Player Two. I didn't feel like searching for another book, um, and so I just I still had this one in my library that I was. I think I have like thirty hours still left to go, or twenty two oh, wow. hours left to go. It's an like when I say it's an investment, it's like a almost sixty hour book to listen to. But, um, yeah, I think that's it. That's all I've got. All right. And then watching is really easy. We've been watching Criminal Minds. That's it. Like, we're now on season 13. Guys, um, it's, a, it's great. It's so good. And, like, I can't believe it's made me cry Oh yeah, on multiple did. occasions. I know. <laughs> I look over at Kevin and he's like, I hate this show. Okay, it's <laughs> I can't. I love, I love those characters so much. I, there's none, there's no character that I really dislike, but there are, the cast right now. Yeah, the cast now is good. Is so good in this season. I I mean, I love Reed and Penelope and JJ. Like those are, those three if those three are hurting, I hurt. You hurt. <laughs> you know, <laughs> totally. Like, we found ourselves talking afterwards. Like, you know, like, these... randomly. Like, oh man, Reese has been through so much. Like, it's. How, like, what's I know. going on? Like, we lose our time. I was like, do you hear us? Like, these people, I know. it's a character. But you get um, so, like, they're, they're good. But that's, like, the main thing that we've been watching. You know, ba- I've been watching college basketball, so that um, interrupts are watching. Uh, Criminal Minds, and I don't think I don't really think we've watched anything Didn't else. Didn't we watch a superhero movie? Yes, we did. The, the Marvels. Marvels, and I thought it was good. I thought Me it was too. cute. I loved. Um, I liked it. I feel, you know, people people are definitely superheroed out, and I can yeah. I get that superhero yeah. fatigue, but I, it's one of the Marvel movies. I think the poorest performing marvel movie which i don't get because i i thought it was quite enjoyable i I liked i liked the story in it too i thought it was interesting to see what captain marvel did after her origin and kind of in between the origin and when she comes back for endgame endgame or no she came back right before endgame Mm -mm. uh in Endgame game f- one, part one. Part one. I thought she Yes, in. you're right. So, yeah, I thought it was really enjoyable. Uh, but we like that stuff too. And, like, yeah. honestly, when people. We're, we're very. I think we're very different than what, like, critics say. Correct. We, we also liked Airbender. Remember that, like, that everybody I mean, else hated? But we did not watch the cartoon. We didn't. If you. If Correct. you. We, if, you if you watch the cartoon, yeah. Airbender, the last Airbender movie yeah. is awful. So, and that, but is, we liked it because we didn't watch the cartoon. Right, we haven't watched the yeah. cartoon, so, so whatever. It was, we, enjoy, it was enjoyable. It, it's not an Oscar winner by any means, no. but it enjoyable enough. And I don't think I would watch it. I probably, okay. I mean, I would watch it again probably like, in a year or yeah. two. Yeah. But I think that's it, guys. What a mess so, you're making over here! No, I just un- no. What are you tearing up? Nothing. Where did all that come from? I don't know. The heavens oh, have the graced heavens. us with this mess. So <laughs> that is it for this week. Uh, we will be back in two weeks. Yeah. Do we have anything coming up? No. Okay. I don't think so. So we appreciate you guys sticking around. Yeah. Why we chit chat, and we hope that you guys have a good two weeks, and we will see you in a fortnight. Bye. Bye.